Hello again, I'm Nyx, and the topic for today's video is solving the remove duplicates from sorted array problem on the leak code website. As always, I'm going to solve this problem in the C++ language and give you a detailed explanation of the entire process from planning of the algorithm to the coding to looking at the time and space complexity and overall analysis of the algorithm as well as looking at the lead code rankings. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stay tuned. Welcome back. Now, if you've seen the previous video I made involving solving the remove element problem, this video might give you some deja vu because if you've solved the remove element, it doesn't take too many tweaks in the algorithm that works for that problem to get it to work for this current problem. Now let's put my coding skills where my mouth is and prove that. So given a sorted array nums, remove the duplicates in place such that each element appears only once and returns the new length. So in place essentially means we cannot create any additional containers. No new arrays, stacks, queues, whatever. None of those because we are going to gun for the big O of one uh, memory complexity, which is a spoiler alert for the analysis section of this video. But carving out new arrays have the memory depend on the arrays size and thus would not be constant. Next, a bit of clarification on what it means to pass by reference. Uh, passing by reference means you don't make a copy of the original. So you're, if you're passing an array by reference to, say, a function as uh, one of its parameters, if you do it by reference, then any changes that function makes to that array is going to be passed directly to that original. Whereas if you pass it by value, what you're actually passing is a copy of that original and any changes that you make within that function are not passed to the original. Next up is some examples to help further clarify. Essentially every single time we have duplicates, we want to remove them and get only the unique numbers still present. Now, one thing to note that is different from the previous problem here is that we still want to maintain the assorted characteristic of this array. So the first five elements of this example have to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 respectively. You can't just plop in any of these willy-nilly and have it be like four, three, two, one, zero, and still get the correct answer. So the output needs to equal this modified length and uh, the values present in that length should be the uh, correct ones in the correct order. What is also good to keep in mind is this sentence here. It doesn't matter what values are set beyond the return length. So if this array had duplicates of the four here, you could have this being zero, one, two, three, four, 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 but it's not going to matter as long as the first five digits are the correct ones in the correct order and this output is correct. It doesn't matter what's beyond it because the computer is never going to bother to look at it. Uh, additional constraints here are some things to keep in mind we could potentially be dealing with an empty array. The length of the array can potentially be quite long. Uh, both negative and positive numbers, and as the question stated, we have nums being sorted. Okay, with all of that, let's start delving into planning out the algorithm. Now, a key thing to ask yourself is, well, in order to do this, we're gonna have to know where the duplicates are how to identify them, and then how to get the values that are going to remain in the modified array to their correct positions. The key thing to help with some of that is to keep in mind that the array that we're being given is a sorted one. So every time you have a number here, if it has a duplicate, 
you automatically know where those duplicates are going to be. They're going to be right after it in sequence. So that detail is going to help us identify where those duplicates are. So that is a key detail to keep in mind. So let's bring up an example on my handy dandy whiteboard and let's go through it to understand the steps that are involved with solving the problem. All right, now first up, I know I'm gonna have to go through the array and iterate through it, but for my starting place, I don't really need to start at index zero, do I? The first number in the array is guaranteed to be unique. I know it can't possibly be a duplicate. So instead, my starting place is going to be at index one, the second position here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the value at that position and I'm going to compare it to the value that's one index lower than it. Is one equal to zero? Mm, no. So that's another unique number. And I shift my index position over to look at the next one. Do the same comparison. Is one equal to the previous index's value? One? Yes. So now I know I'm dealing with a duplicate. Now at this point, I could potentially do a, another iteration and shift over all of the numbers that are present to the right of the current position one step over to immediately remove that one. But doing that means I'm going to have to do that every single time I have a duplicate and always shift over the remaining elements in the array one position. So basically, they're going to get to their final position by doing a series of small little baby steps. And that would necessitate having some additional loops and worse, nested loops. And that would be not ideal considering how large the length of this array could be getting up to 10 to the fourth power. Eh, I don't really want to deal with nested loops and it's inefficient to get to your destination by doing a series of baby steps. So ideally what I would want to do is only do one move and get every single value from its initial position to where it ultimately ends up, its final position in just one step. And ideally I would want to do that while I'm only iterating through this array once. So with that being said, I know this too is going to ultimately end up where this duplicate one is. That's its final position. It's only gonna need to be shifted one place because at this point, I've only seen that one duplicate. So it ultimately moves there. But later on, as I'm continuing through my iteration, let's see what happens. Now my index is at this second two. Do the comparison, two is equal to two. I know I have a duplicate. Now at this point, I've seen two duplicates. So let's keep that in mind and keep going because at this point, I still haven't seen anything that I actually have to move yet as I've already moved that original two. Moving over to this position here, I see another two. Two is indeed equal to two, it's previous value. So that is yet another duplicate. Finally, I get to three and three is not equal to two. So it is another unique value. But in this case, because I've seen three duplicates here, I'm going to need to ultimately shift this three here, three places back to where that original two was. So this shows that the final position for where values end up is dictated by how many duplicates you've seen by that point in the array. If you've seen one duplicate, the next value that you see that is not going to be a duplicate is going to be shifted one place. If you've seen three duplicates, it's going to be shifted three places. So going through that example gives us a good idea of what we're going to have to do in terms of the steps in order to craft the algorithm. We need to iterate through the array. We need to keep track of how many duplicates we've seen. And we need to shift the values that aren't duplicates over an amount that's dictated by how many duplicates we've seen. And then at the end of that, because our output is an integer, we want to output that new modified array length. 
which is going to ultimately be equal to the length of the original ray, subtracting out all of those duplicates. So with that in mind, we can move on to coding. First up is an integer variable to hold the count of the duplicates, and I'm going to set that initially to zero. Next up is the beginning of a, of a for loop that's going to iterate through the array. And note, this is slightly modified from a typical default for loop that you see. In this case, we're going to start at index is equal to one instead of index being equal to zero. Because again, we know that the first value present is not going to be a duplicate. Next up is this if statement here. And the condition we're looking at is if the value at the current index minus one is equal to the value at the current index, in other words, if we're dealing with a duplicate, we want to record that and increment the duplicate count by one. Next up is an else branch. Now the if condition here handles counting the duplicates. The else branch here handles the shifting. And it does that by setting the value at the current index minus the duplicate count equal to whatever the value is at the current index is. Finally, since our output is supposed to be an integer, we want to return the length of that modified array, which again is just equal to the size of the original, minus how many duplicates are present in it. And with that, this code should be able to handle anything that the test cases throw at it. Even the edge case of the uh, empty array because in that case, when we get to the for loop, uh, index equal to one is one less than num size, which is zero. One is not less than num size. So it's never gonna go into the for loop. It's just going to skip over and go to the return statement. Zero minus zero is zero. So it should work. Now let's prove that and start running some code. Pending, judging, this is equal to that. Great. Let's do the full shebang. Pending, judging, accepted. So this code does work. Now let's go through the time and space complexity. Let's look at the late code rankings. And after that, I'm going to do some bonus analysis on this code and see how it can be changed by changing its frame of reference and how that affects it. So in terms of time complexity, with only one for loop here, nothing nested. It's going to be dictated by the size of that nums array. So this is going to be equal to big O of n time complexity or linear time, dependent on the size of that original array. In terms of space complexity, the only thing we have created here was one constant variable that holds integers. We didn't create any additional containers so we have fulfilled the requirement of getting a big O of 1 space complexity. With that let's go and see what the rankings are. Oh, cool. So we are up here and again when you see these types of stark differences this kind of indicates one type of algorithm with one type of complexity. So these are probably various types of uh, linear time algorithms. And the things that are around here are probably different types of algorithms that maybe use uh, nested loops that have higher time complexities. Note, if you actually click on these bars, you can see a representative example of the code of what that would be present. So that's really good for um, learning purposes. In terms of memory, eh, run of the mill. Again, this is all very tightly spaced apart. So these are probably algorithms that are pretty much fulfilling the constant memory time. And they might just spread out because of backend issues or server traffic. Okay, back at the problem. And I want to see how this problem can shift depending on what your frame of reference is. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in this scenario here with this code, 
I started at position one and I went to the very end of the array with I less than nums equal to size. And in that range, I'm looking at what the index is that is one less than where my current position is. So all of that is within the range of the index. I'm not going to have any out of bounds errors as a result. But look what happens if this index was actually zero. You're going through the entire array. And again, the first thing you do is you try to look at, if you're here, you're trying to look at the index that's one less than the very start. Uh-oh, that's beyond the beginning of the array and that's gonna result in an out of bounds error. So that is why with this frame of reference, that is why that's one. Now, can you create an array that say starts from the beginning and still have it work? Well, yes, you can but you're going to have to alter some of the other lines that are affected by that frame of reference shift. And you're also going to have to, again, pay special attention to the edge cases here, hint, hint. But let me do those changes here and get back to you. Okay, these are the alterations of all of the lines that are already present here. You shift your index position to want to start at zero. And in this case, you want to go until one less than the very end. So instead of starting at one and going to the end, you're starting at zero and you're going to the next to last. Because here, you're now going to look at what is one higher than your current index value. And you still want to make sure that you're within the boundaries of this array. If you go from here, the start to the very end, and you have this comparison of, oh, hey, I wanna go and look at what's one higher, you're gonna reach a beyond the end of the array out of bounds error as that result. So your starting place dictates how your ending place is going to go. It dictates where your current reference is, as well as the shift line here also alters because your current position is changed here. So for this line, take this example right here with this one. Here, when you're going to know that that one is a unique value is when you're at this position here. At this position, you're looking at the position one higher than it, and you're recognizing that this condition does not hold. Zero is not equal to one, one is a new value. So in this case, because your current frame of reference, your current position is at the duplicate and not at the value to move, this dictates this line needs to be changed to it being nums i plus one, minus dupe clount being set equal to whatever is one higher than it. So it's going to change this value here, which is at the current position, plus one, but by this position, you know we have a dupe count, so that also subtracts one. So this, for this example, reduces to just nums i, the current position, and it's going to set that position equal to whatever the value is at one higher than that. Now looking at the second duplicate here. At this position, we're going to see this two at one higher and realize, okay, that's not a duplicate. We go into this line. And in this case, we want to sh set the position of this current position plus one minus the dupe count, which at this point is zero, one, one. We've seen three duplicates. So minus three, one, two, three. So that position and we want to set that position to what the value is at the current index plus one is. So you have to add plus one to both this side and this side in this line. Now with all of this, you'll ensure that you don't have an out of bounds error for most issues. However, this code is not going to handle a case for an empty array. And to prove that, custom test case with an empty array, run code, and I'm gonna get an error. See, runtime error. Applying non-zero offset four to null pointer. 
So this freaks out. So in order to avoid that error from happening, we need to, before this for loop comes up in processing the code, we need to take care of that edge case, like so. This if statement will first check if the size of the array is equal to zero. And if it is, well, we're simply going to return zero and break out of this function here. We're never going to get to that for loop that results in that runtime error. So with this additional code to check for that edge case before any hinky business happens here in the for loop, we now can run the code pending, judging, and that runtime error is now eliminated. And with that, you can submit and it should pass every single case. Yep, and it does, except it. This should be fairly similar to the previous one. Yeah, still within the range of a big O of n time complexity, which it still maintains. Additional if checks might slightly slow the runtime, so that makes sense, but again, keep lead code rankings in mind with a heavy grain of salt. And memory usage is again within the same very tight ballpark. That was the remove duplicates from sorted array and going over essentially one way to solve it, but shifting your frame of reference in two different ways and seeing how that affects the code. So I hope this video was informative for you. I hope you got something out of it. And as always, I will wish you happy coding and to have a nice day.